Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with a sneaky strategy to deal a devastating amount of damage. When you look at Spear Goblins, you probably are laughing a little bit. You're like, Tulix or Cost Card barely does any damage. I can ignore that. But what most people don't realize, when you pair it with Cannon Cart, because Spear Goblins move fast, they push the Cannon Cart directly to tower. And if the Cannon Cart can lock onto your opponent's tower, it can be game-winning damage right then and there. After you take tower, no matter what your opponent spams at you, you're not gonna care. With Dark Goblins, Guards, Cannon Carts, and Mortars, it's gonna be near impossible for them to break through. Most of the time, decks like Golem Clone that can take out towers in one push don't necessarily have good defenses. So playing a safe deck like this one that has firepower to take out a tower with just one push, yeah. So you guys can probably see why I fell in love with this deck. Being able to take out towers quickly while being able to defend all the crazy shenanigans that Ladder throws at me, it's pretty much a perfect deck for Ladder. There's a professional player playing this exact deck with Fireball right now at 300 in the world. But I think Poison is going to be a lot better because Fireball is getting a massive nerf in the next balance changes. And you'll get a much better matchup into Skeleton Armies, Clone Decks, and all the Graveyard Decks that are everywhere. There's no doubt this deck will stay at the top after the new balance changes. So let's go jump straight to some games and assert dominance. A huge thanks to everyone that's using Creator Code Surtag to support the channel. Here we go. Let's get it. So starting off the game strong, I want to go for a Mortar aggressively, just catch my opponent in a bad card cycle or out of position, and see what we can make happen. Seriously, you're running Barbut. That is literally one of the least played cards in Clash Royale. It most of the time has a 0% usage rate in the top 1,000 in the game. How do I know this? Because I do a lot of Mimi decks using the worst cards in the game. <laughs> I'm going to go for a Dark Goblin here since it is able to kill the Electro Dragon. The only time that you'll ever see this is if you're playing against a Lix Elixir Golem deck, which, I mean, Elixir Golem is about to get a huge rework and a buff in the next balance changes. So we'll have to wait and see if Elixir Golem comes back in the meta with Bar Putt. I'm thinking probably not going to have Bar Putt. Wait, what? Seriously? What is this right now? Why do you have Graveyard with this? I've never seen an Electro Dragon Spire Putt Graveyard deck in my entire life. He's taking Meme to the next level. <laughs> I'm going to go in for a Miner since we have Counter Pushing Units right into a Valkyrie. Super unfortunate. It does make a little bit more sense that we see a Valkyrie here now because that fits the Control-esque feature of Graveyard, right? You Counter Push, you defend your opponent's stuff, and then you fling Graveyards at your opponent until they flail hopelessly. But uh, kind of not in that situation right now for him. Maybe what we can do is we get in and get his elixir so slow that I can go for a cannon car and then push it with spear goblins or go in for guards. I think guards would be a little bit more optimal right now because I can readily afford them. And he's not going to be able to get the barb rolling down. Yeah, that's awesome. So the reason why this deck can be very successful in some situations is if they spend too much elixir, they won't have elixir to stop the cannon car. And if the cannon car can get pushed directly on top of the tower, as you guys can see, we dealt his entire tower besides 500 damage. So the strategy is push your cannon cart towards success whenever your opponent has any opportunity for you to get the damage. And then you just defend with your cannon carts, your mortars, your dark goblins for the rest of the game. And yeah, this guy already gave up. He doesn't even try to defend his tower against the dark goblin. So you guys might be used to leap barbarians or bridge spam decks taking out towers with just one push, but mortar decks can do that too. All right, so here we go. Spear goblins are my favorite play to start the day. You guys already know the deal. If we bait out a log or we bait out a small spell, then our Dark Goblins and our Guards are going to give us a ton of value. The fact that he just ate 600 damage from Spear Goblins makes me feel like he's a very aggressive player. So I'm going to go for a Mortar on the other side, so then if he goes in for Giant Graveyard, you might be able to get some extra value here. It's definitely a Giant Graveyard player. So I'm going to go for a Cannon Cart as well. And then Minion Horde's coming down from our opponent. Uh, I think I have to go for Guards to go and pull the Minion Horde. If I don't do that, I'm probably going to lose the game. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go and pull it to the other side and procrastinate our problems for another day. Man. Giant Graveyard or Sparky plus Giant with Arrows and Mirror and all that other stuff. Those are not matchups that are fun to play against. But you can still fabricate some answers with ground cards against Minion Horde by kiting units to the other side. So that's what we do when we need to do it. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do on the spot, though, if you guys aren't used to it. Okay, so he's going to zap Mirror on top of the Spear Goblins for a negative one trade. That was a Mirror zap because you can look at the the actual card when it's getting dropped and then there's a mirror symbol so that's how i was able to tell that it was a negative one trade for him oh this might not be good or it could be really good the cannon card's gonna get pushed into the tower and the dark goblin's gonna lock yes he goes in for mini packa thank goodness he dropped extra elixir there i didn't know if he was or not and because he did now i can uh kind of just relish in the fact that i don't have to spend much elixir that might get a hit on my tower but i don't think it's too bad for me because i can save the guards now if i drop the guards there it went right into the sparky he's making prediction arrows which is honestly pretty funny and we can follow up the miner with the spear goblins coming in afterward he'll probably zap on the first iteration of guards and then we can go for a poison on top of 
the, the minion horde. He's not zapping. Why didn't he zap? What is he doing? <laughs> If you don't zap, I'm gonna give you the clap. Those spear goblins are gonna hit hard, man. Jeez, this is a beautiful game right now. Sometimes crazy interactions just fabricate themselves in the most mysterious manner in Clash Royale. Things that I can't necessarily describe very well. Like that, uh, Mirror Minion Horde. Sick, nice strategy. Okay, so he'll probably arrows along with the giant here, and I think I can get back to a decent answer. We'll have to wait and see. I 100% want to go in for spear goblins on the other side and then poison this. And then probably need to go in for like a dark goblin here. If I don't end up killing the mini pack, I'm going to be a super sad sir. Oh my gosh, it didn't die. <laughs> that makes me want to cry every single time that doesn't die. It's all good though. We can minion horde counter again with guards. Guards, you're getting really sick of this, aren't you? You're just doing the same thing. Rinse and repeat, man. You're just living in Westworld or something. Do we want to go in for... Uh, nah, I can't necessarily go in for an aggressive mortar because I need to be able to pull everything. With Cannon Cart and Spear Goblins, I should be able to finish this off, though. He's going to go in for a mini pack behind the Giant, 100%, right? It wouldn't make sense for him not to. I'm going to go for Spear Goblins. Hopefully, we can surround everything and then go for Guards after he decides the arrows. Beautiful sight to see. If he zaps that one Spear Goblin, I'm going to be a sad sir, but it doesn't happen. Beautiful. All right, we're going to go aggressive with a Mortar, and then I'm going to Miner. So this Mortar is going to force out Elixir, so then he can't defend the Miner, so then we're going to win the game with the Miner. And that's how you play this deck. When your opponent's at a low Elixir count, you spread them too thin. So as soon as you're at 7 Elixir and they're at 4, you go Mortar, Miner, and then you just finish off the game because either the Miner is going to connect and do 500 damage because they have to ignore it, or the Mortar is going to give you that final parting shot, allowing you to poison Log and seal his fate. And in our case, everything hit. All right, so we've got a game against Naruto. Dude, I'm ready to go and hustle and bustle through with our Dark Goblin. We're ready to show you the true way of the ninja. If I can go for the log and get some cheeky chip damage at the start, it's not the worst thing in the world because if you go Goblin Barrel, I can shut down two of the goblins very quickly with my guards. And he's going to go in for a knight in the back. That's interesting. Are you going to Tesla on top of the, the mortar? Usually I would expect that. So that's why I decided to go in for the, the guards there. I thought he was going to have an expo deck. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, I don't really want to like let him get a free Tesla and then expo immediately after. I want to kill the Tesla if I can with my guards. And it didn't really work out as planned because it looks like this guy's going to have mortar rocket cycle. So he's kind of stealing a page from my book. Maybe we can go in for a minor here. I don't want to go in for Spear Goblins because there's a chance he drops a small spell on top of the Cannon Cart, so I just don't want to give him that potential. Ooh, so Poison would be very aggressive on our end. It doesn't make much sense because the Log will be able to kill the Archers as well, so I'll take that instead. I'm going to go for Spear Goblins, and then I can follow up with a Mortar on Defense. And the reason I'm dropping Mortar on Defense is because he likely has Rocket Cycle, so there's no way of him killing our Mortar, and our Mortar will guarantee that he doesn't get any tower damage there. So we're trading relatively evenly, 4 for 4 trade. I take that any day of the week. What are you going to do, man? Are you going to go in for any rockets on my tower? Because you are up a bit of elixir right now. You're dropping your skeletons and ice spear and trying to get a good trade. And you are getting a great trade, forcing out a cannon cart for only a one elixir ice spirit. Let me be clear. I can eat an ice spirit. I can never eat a fire spirit, though, because that ship damage adds up over time. Okay, so I'm going to use the cannon cart to the best of our ability since it's going to be tanking for the miner. Even if you activate king tower, it's not that bad for me because... I know that it was going to happen eventually, and if you drop three elixir there, that's going to be an, a negative trade because I'm doing tower damage in the process with it, so I'll take that every time we can. We're expecting to go for an ice spirit or skeleton, so I'm going to log it and try to predict on it, and I hit the ice spirit. Let's go. Spear goblins are going to give me some damage. You guys might be like, Jake, why are you so happy about spear goblins? Predictions, no matter what they are, the small things in life, you got to celebrate those too. Uh, I should go in for a cannon cart because it's a safer play to kill that. And it costs less elixir overall because then I wouldn't have to go in for the guards here. I would have been able to snipe that before he got down the knight. It is what it is, though. I don't think I have to do anything else. I think the guards do do enough damage. I'm going to go in for a dark goblin here and go and push the cannon cart before he's ready. Yes, the cannon cart's going to lock onto the tower, I think, right? We forced out a mortar because he was so utterly unprepared. And then it seemed like the mortar like went back and shot his tower, but there was no friendly fire. It feels bad, man. We want the mortar shots to actually hurt you. Why do your mortar shots not hurt? But mine do. The, the world just doesn't make sense at Clash Royale sometimes. Okay, so we're going to log, and then I'm going to go in for a cannon card here. Since it will take the targeting from the mortar, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. Uh, I spoke too soon. That was really well played. Credit where credit is due. That was an amazing tornado. At least it seems like it was. If he's able to defend this, that was one of the best tornadoes he's done in a while. Jeez. Okay, so the poison's going to come through. That means that I can guarantee that I can get a miner on top of the tower because he's going to be so preoccupied by defending the mortar that he's not going to be able to defend the miner. So the miner locks. Wait, we're kind of coming back in this game. We are currently winning by 70 HP. I know it's not much, but it is something, all right? I hope that I can go in for a dark goblin here so we can finish off the ice spirit 
and it doesn't go into the log, so that's beautiful. I can follow up with another mortar, and we know that he's got rocket cycles, so that's the one thing that scares me. Playing against rocket cycle decks, they do way more damage than your measly poison miner can ever whip out. But we can still make this work if I play well enough. So I'm going to pre-log on the skeletons or the knight, depending on whatever he wants to drop. He's dropping skeletons, and he's going to rocket me. See, this is the thing that I was scared about, guys. I'm telling you right now, it is not easy when you're playing against the cheesy rocket. So I'm going to go in for Spear Goblins, and I'm going to try to go and push our Cannon Cart if possible before he gets back to a knight. Dude, the Cannon Cart locked on! He wasn't ready for the cheese! He wasn't ready for the cheese. Yes, please, baby. We'll do that every single time we can. If you guys go in for Spear Goblins, the push your Cannon Cart, people don't play against Spear Goblins. They don't know about that potential, and they will lose games. And it's a beautiful sight to see. GG, well played and peace out. Did I not say at the very start of the game, we were going to show him the way of the ninja. We snuck past them and we silently assassinated that tower. I love spear goblins and you should too. All right, so jumping into the action against Eunice. What is up, my dude? If I go for Dark Goblin at the river, it's probably going to get shut down and give me a negative trade. But if I go for a miner, that is 110% going to get caught. Fortunately, our opponent decides to make the first play. I am dropping a Dark Goblin and a Cannon Card to counter a Goblin Barrel, and I'm taking a massive negative issue trade. I'm still not denying all the damage. But the good thing is, all of our units counter push, so there is that. He's going to miss the Rascals. That is a ton of value. That's 500 damage for free. And the Cannon Card's going to die, but it's okay because I can go for a Mortar at the river. Even if the Cannon Card dies, it's going to protect the Mortar. So you can't Inferno Tower. You can't Tesla. You might have to take a lot of damage here. Oh, he did Inferno Tower. Wait, what? I thought my Cannon Card was going to stay alive a little bit longer there. Wow. Okay. I guess I was an, a baffling idiot or something. I don't know. I thought that we would get more value there. You guys let me know down below in the comment section if you thought that Cannon Card was going to be a bit more clutch. I definitely did. So I'm going to go for guards on top of the Dark Goblin and get some counter push. It's not going to give us too much, but it'll maybe force out some extra elixir or he's going to take 600 damage. Okay. He's going to take 600 damage. I'll take that. Wow. That's awesome. Uh, what the heck? Why are you mirroring up a Dark Goblin? Why does it die to log? Oh my gosh. My log is level 14, by the way. It is max level and it didn't kill that Dark Goblin. Why are you going in for a Goblin Barrel in front of the tower too? You already baited out my log. You could have just dropped it directly on top of my tower. First class flight towards my tower, but you decided to go and take like the extended pathway for no reason whatsoever. So many questions and not enough answers here, guys. I'm going to go for a Mortar. It should lock onto the majority of the Rascals if I don't get super unlucky here. And if you go in for an Inferno Tower, that's going to be a negative one trade every single time. So I'm going to go for Guards last possible second so we can finish off the Rascals and pull back the Thick Boy. And looking at the situation, I'm loving it. It's been a weird dynamic game that I don't know what's actually going to happen, which is the best thing about Clash Royale. If you know every single interaction, it gets boring after a while. I'm glad that this guy decided to spice things up a bit. I think that the Spear Goblin does kill the Dark Goblin as well, so it's a two for three trade. Not too bad for me. Maybe I can go in for a Cannon Cart and then Miner him. My Cannon Cart's not going to get pushed, but here's what happens is he's going to go for a Mirrored Up Goblin Barrel, and I only have one log, so I'm screwed. So that's why I'm going to try to go and beat out his uh, unit on defense so then he can't Mirror Up the Goblin Barrel. If you Mirror Up the Goblin Barrel, I'm going to be in some serious trouble. Okay, so Dark Goblin's going to be able to pop off. Maybe you go for an Inferno Tower for like the umpteenth time. I think he's going to Inferno Tower, so I'm going to make a Prediction Guards on top of it. Yeah, finally, we're able to protect our Mortar for the first time in our lives. It's a beautiful sight to... What? Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> what is this? Why? <laughs> okay, I guess this guy's getting ready for the new balance changes as well. He's running Mega Knight. That's hilarious. All right, I'm going to Mortar here, so maybe my Dark Goblin's going to stay alive. Nope, he's going to go in for an Inferno Tower, or he's going to go with Skeleton Army. Okay, Skeleton Army's in the middle, and he is going to go for an Inferno Tower afterward. I can't uh, body block it. My Spear Goblins are off to the side. Feels bad, man. Maybe we can get a Cannon Card here to kill the Inferno Tower. We can predict... No, he doesn't have Skeleton Army back in cycles. So he's going to go Goblin Barrel, and then he's going to Skeleton Army on top of the Cannon Card. He's going to Rascals instead. Ooh, okay. I guess he didn't have it faster than I, than I thought. Dark Goblin's going to go into the Cannon... No, it's going to go right-hand side. That's unfortunate. I wanted to be able to finish everything off with the Guards. It is what it is. As you guys already know, Spear Goblins will shut down the Dark Goblin with a pretty good trade for us. He's going to Dark Goblin Mirror, which is bad because obviously that's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, Skeleton Army is in cycle, so that's why he's going to drop on top of this Miner 100%. So I'm going to make a Poison. I'm going to make a Prediction here. Get a Skeleton Army, please. Yes, sirs! That's what I'm talking about. Usually, you don't have to make predictions like that, but we just want to be fancy. We want to make sure we deny all damage up in here. No Dark Goblin damage either. This game is actually coming down to the wire. It's uh, been a bit more risky than usual. Most of these games are super under control, but this is anything but. Rascal should die to the Mortar as well, and then he's going to go to Furnace Tower, or he's going to go in for a... Um, Mega Knight, he went in for the Inferno Tower instead. That means the guard might be able to allow us to kill the Inferno Tower. Get another prediction. No, he's going to Mega Knight here. He's not going to go for a Skeleton Army. He's not back to Skeleton Army. 
So he's going to Skeleton Army again. We're going to make another Poison Prediction, please. Yes, this is awesome. <laughs> Two times in a row. How tilted is this guy right now? On an existential level, he probably doesn't want to play Clash Royale anymore. Those are two skeleton armies just completely giving him zero value. Let's go. So we got a game against Fabrico. You guys already know Mortar at the start is a little bit scary if they Electro Giant. So this is a risky play that I would not, you know, encourage anyone to do if you guys are scared. But we live life adventurously, and especially if we have Cannon Cart in our starting hand, which we didn't, then it's a very good play because you can still damage down the Electro Giant. Okay, so I think I got to go for Cannon Cart here because my Dark Goblin's going to die, and I can't let it die. Am I going to cry? Is that is that going to kill my entire tower? Oh, we're able to pull with Spear Goblins. The Cannon Cart's still alive, and he's not able to go for the Two Elixir Graveyard. Holy, let's go! The Dark Goblin wanted to get some action up in here. It ended up pushing the Cannon Cart straight towards success. What a phenomenal start in this game. Unfortunately, he got the mortar. No, he didn't. He didn't get the mortar counter down in time. So I can log this and I think it targets tower now. No, it's targeting the stupid skeletons. Okay, so if the mortar shoots on top of the tombstone and you log it, it kills. And then the tower should get targeted by the mortar afterward. Unfortunately, that interaction did not go as planned. But, you know, it was still fun. It was still fun if we were able to make it happen. If only those two deceitful skeletons didn't trick me into going in for that log. Okay, so we want to keep this elixir low. So I'm going to go in for a minor. I was actually dropping that at 10 elixir. I should be dropping this around 7. Because if your opponent has a graveyard deck, they want to be able to build up counter pushes. But if their elixir is low and they don't have elixir for the graveyard, their baby dragon is easily dealt with with your cannon cart or your dark goblin and then your tower. I mean, you can make some really good trades happen if your opponent's at a low elixir count because your cards are just more cost effective. So I'm going to go for spear goblins here. He went in for tornado. So now we know that we can minor in the back and not care. I think that we're able to get... Ooh... Ooh, this is very nice. Yeah, you're not going to be back to Tornado. And then you're going to have to defend the Mortar. So you have no Elixir. That's just going to be 500 free damage. That is beautiful, guys. There's one thing about getting damage with Miner. It's not something people expect. <laughs> but if you can calibrate your card cycle correctly, you can get the value. Okay, so the guards are definitely going to die here. There's nothing I can get from there. There's no extraction of value. I can go in for a poison since it will deny everything. I could have also Dark Goblin, but since he is likely to be able to get value from the Baby Dragon tanking since it's not something that I can kill, I felt compelled to go in for more of an aggressive uh, stance on offense with, with other cards and save my poison on defense. Okay, so the Miner again, very, very nice. I can Dark Goblin on the other side. It will potentially be able to kill everything, and then I can go in for the Cannon Card as well. So here's the thing. I dislike the baby dragon coming at me because I don't know if I can kill that in time. I hope that the baby dragon dies, but with the help of the ice lizard and everything else, he is able to cannibalize my cannon cart. So in double elixir, you can go for a poison and play a bit more aggressive. And the reason why I'm doing this is I want him to graveyard and not have anything cross the river. So I'm going to stop the baby dragon from crossing the river with this aggressive mortar. I'm going to spear goblins here. I'm going to dark goblin. So my tower and my dark goblin are going to target down all the graveyard skeletons while the mortar is blocking the baby dragon. So then his baby dragon can't tank for the graveyard. So then if he can't tank for the graveyard, he's obviously going to get a lot less damage. That's what I was trying to do. Hopefully that made sense for you guys. This body blocking stuff at the river ensures more damage for you and more success in the long run. I can poison again because it will be able to kill the Skeleton King, so he's not able to get too much value from that. I'll be able to stop him from crossing the river again because he's going to go in for another uh, Baby Dragon, probably. I'll go for Spear Goblins. I don't know if this is... This might be too aggressive because if he Baby Dragon's in the back, that's good. He does. I can go Guards here and then play another Miner because he's going to have to go in for like an Ice Wizard and a Poison, and that's just too much Elixir. He can't stop the Miner. He can't stop the Miner because the Skeleton King isn't going to come down in time. Yo, this is so cool. Skeleton King screws up his card cycle because he would be able to cycle back to another Valkyrie, but because Skeleton King, you could only get one on the map, you have to wait and recharge to be able to cycle it again, so then he has no way of stopping or body blocking my Miner. I felt like an Auctioneer there, but guys, we are rattling fast just like an Auctioneer would and taking damage on his tower. So I could poison aggressively, but since I'm in such a pristine position, I think I want to save my poison on defense for the potential graveyard that should be coming down any second. That's what we're gearing up for. Graveyard should be coming down. If he doesn't, then that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, one of the things is, like, just play safe. So you don't end up sorry in the game. That's one thing that I've always like lived by. If you can lose the game, try to like not let that happen. <laughs> you know, we're going to go in for a minor in the spot that's not so safe. But with all of our other shenanigans coming at him, I don't think I have any worries. He's going to go in for the Skeleton King ability 100%. He goes in for the Tornado. I think I can go in for a uh, poison last second and then win the game. I'm not, I'm not poisoning on defense and I'm not poisoning on offense just because I want to play safe, as I said before. And now we're going to poison in the last remaining second when he can't stop the Miner and we will guarantee the win. 
So GG, well played a piece out. It was a pleasure dominating everyone today. And it shows you guys, if you hate playing against Graveyard, this is probably the deck for you. Guards, Dark Goblin, Poison, yeah, I'm not losing that matchup. Even if you've got an overpowered champion like the Skeleton King. Like, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.